So we're just lining up the inner edge, the inner edge of this new piece um, parallel to the main reference edge, and just using a, a simple square. And we're just looking for a consistent measurement along this edge, um, front, front and back with the square. The, once the actual upper gantry is mounted, uh, we're gonna we have some set screws that we can use to adjust the uh, the pitch and the and the roll of the plate, and then also going to use a metalized epoxy um, to fill in the this inner gap, and then we'll use that once the machine's done. We'll um, we'll make the upper gantry parallel and, and square with the, the lower rails, and then the epoxy will set and hold that position. So I have this 24 inch level just lightly clamped. Uh, I put this piece of wood here to add a clamping spot for the C clamp, and it's just very lightly clamped so we don't distort it because there's a gap here in the center, and that'll be used as a reference edge. So these plates haven't been welded on yet, but they'll be butted up against this face here of the level, um, which is like reasonably straight for this welding application. So that'll keep it. I'll keep these base plates um, code planer with the back of these uh, rail mounts that I've already been welded on. And we'll do the same with this one. Um, so it'll just put up against. We'll adjust it and then clamp it down. Cut it really heavily with these vice grips, and um, I'll preheat it with the torch. Um, preheat it with the torch because it's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of steel mass for this Nick Pack 180 Lincoln welder. Um, I've noticed once it's preheated, it does weld nicer. Uh, you get less uh, um, cold weld edge curling in at the bottom of the rear of the weld here. So it needs a bit of preheat. So this is the main base plate. I'm gonna mount the linear rails on the surface, both these two, and then the upper, upper y-axis, z-axis assembly gantry is gonna be mounted to these larger base plates. So these will be threaded M12, um, and then there'll be a larger welded structure above that. Um, and this is a subframe. Underneath there's ribbing, uh, larger one inch by one and a half inch cold rolled flat bar, and then two, two parallel flat bars going across underneath. And then these linear rail bases are just stitch welded. Just try to keep it flat prevent distortion. Um, and then there's a, a guide rail, like a reference edge that gets bolted bolted to the side of this member and it's, it's um, lapped with the uh, abrasive and then uh, shimmed to keep it uh, straight. And then I have a 24 inch stare at straight edge that'll be used to set the reference edge perfectly straight and then the rail will be clamped, the guideway will be clamped to that reference edge and then the second rail will be set um, with a dial indicator parallel uh, to this reference rail and then both, everything will be torqued down. So we have a square set, the piece is clamped and we're just looking at the measurement. Just looking for five and three sixteenths, which is close enough. And then you go to this next. That's not be hard to measure, but um, keep that edge close and square. And then it focuses again five and three sixteenths, and then touching touching this level edge there. And we'll tack put a few tacks on the underside where the overlap of the parallel rails is, and then we'll flip it over and fully weld it, and then do the mount the second one reference to this reference to this one. So we got the two gantry mounting plates well just tacked in really. I'm just using a flux cord um, wire, a big, big welder. So just quick, uh, it's a little dark. Um, just quick tacks on the plates. We're gonna flip the whole assembly over and just weld um, downright, so it'll be a bit easier. And then just summon just two tacks on both parallel bars. So this is the structure of the, the base of the CNC mill, the steel weldment within the, the casting. Um, it'll be a, like a precision non-shrink grout, um, like a Sika, Sika, I'll try to pronounce it, 212 mix um, with some coarser Three quarter inch and smaller like angular aggregate. Um, it'll be about five or six inches um, deep from the depth of the depth of this member, so five inches after that. Um, so you can see the internal ribbing, main main stiffener down the length of the, the mill. So this will be the y-axis, and then two parallel uh, one inch by I think two inch um, flat bar, cold rolled. With the cold rolled, you get a much um, square edge, um, flatter surface compared to the, the hot rolled. Um, so these are some hot rolled members that I bought, um, but they're a bit too rough I think for what I'm doing. Um, but the nice square edges. Um, make assembly and measuring and stuff a lot easier and keeps everything flatter so there's less um, lapping and um, precision work afterwards. Um, I don't have a milling machine or a lathe so trying to figure out how to build it without those two tools um, is a bit tricky. So I'm just gonna weld all these inner joints so four four places on each on each plate same with over here and then I've already done the welding on the, the connection in the middle plate so just some stitch two inch long stitch welds on all the flat bars and then down the length there's three there's three stitches down the length. Um, you can see here, these are just the underside threaded holes for the, the ball screw bearing mounts. So the main bearings here, and then just the, the floating end bearing is, is there. And then um, we're gonna be mounting, I'm gonna be mounting um, some of these threaded threaded bolts. So I'm gonna cut these a bit shorter and have them welded to the underside in uh, various places along here and along the main ribbing, um, just to support the um, support the grout and the connection between the grout and the steel. Um, we have some, um, Thinner threaded rod, and then just some other bolts that we're going to be welding to the welding to this whole area. And then the casting will be the casting is going to follow the profile of the steel quite tightly, so it'll be um, co-planar with this edge, and then come across the front slight chamfer, and then parallel down 
uh, this edge and then tighten it on here. So the whole goal was to um, have this fit through a standard doorway. So the whole assembly is only, um, the whole assembly is only, I think 690 millimeters wide. Let me get a measuring tape here. So uh, yeah, so 690 millimeters wide, 27 and a quarter inches. Um, so it'll fit through pretty much every standard doorway um, in a household garage. Um, so that's the goal of the project. And it's only, um, it's 30, it's 36 inches long, 920 millimeters. And it'll be a bit longer because the, the cable chain for the Y axis and the, um, the B axis servo motor uh, sticks out past the end of the frame by about 200 millimeters once it's at its minimum travel. So it'll be about 50, 50 inches deep. Um, but the, the length that way doesn't really matter that much. It's mostly just the width. Yeah, with the preheat, you can see uh, much better weld. The edges, the edges of the, like the toe of the weld is tangent to the surface. You can see it's wetting out nicely. So just need, uh, just need more heat input and the steel has to be preheated. So, so that's, the, that's the more preheated weld, let's focus. And then these are the original welds. 